Daniel Suarez gets a one-year extension. Kyle Larson on pole for Saturday's Knoxville Nationals. Plus, Bristol Motor Speedway finally announces the Speedway Classic. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. A lot to get into today, so we're jumping right into the news. Daniel Suarez has signed a one-year deal with Trackhouse for 2025. The team announced that on Friday that Suarez and his sponsor, Freeway Insurance, would be back for 2025. Freeway will have one-third of the NASCAR Cup Series calendar, including the Daytona 500, as well as the All-Star Race as the primary sponsor. For Suarez, this feels very much like a put-up-or-shut-up type of year. Win, be successful or get out and move on with the career here. And for Suarez, he's been with Trackhouse since 2021. He was their maiden driver for their inaugural season for Trackhouse over there in that 99 car. And for Suarez, he's had hit or miss success up to this point. He does, of course, have two wins with Trackhouse in the Cup Series, one at Sonoma back in 2022, and he became the first Mexican-American to win a NASCAR Cup Series race. And then as well as earlier this spring at Atlanta, when he won in that crazy three-wide finish where he beat Ryan Blaney by like three one-thousandths of a second and Kyle Busch by seven one-thousandths of a second. But when it comes to consistency, he's been a bit like a leaf in a hurricane. It's been shaky at best. He only has four top 10 finishes this year. He is coming off a top 10 at the Brickyard 400 the last time the NASCAR Cup Series was out, but we haven't seen that su sustained consistency out of Daniel Suarez like you would want to see out of a guy that is in a pretty competitive ride, especially on the Chevy tier ladder. Trackhouse is certainly getting some resources over there. It's not Hendrick Motorsports, but they should probably be running better than where they currently are, especially when you have a teammate like Ross Chastain, who's contending for wins and has contended for a championship in the past. 2024, of course, has not been Trackhouse's year, but for Daniel Suarez, he will be back on a one-year deal, and you have to to think that that seat is getting hotter and hotter as time goes by. They, of course, have Shane Van Gisbergen knocking on the door to move up to the Cup Series, which that's expected to happen with a third charter that the team is going to acquire. So next year, expect them to have three teams. But they did, of course, just announce Connor Zilich's deal over at Junior Motorsports on loan from Trackhouse for 2025. Sounds like that might be a one year deal. Would it be smart to move Connor up that quickly? I don't think so. But of course, you know, things can happen. Zane Smith does sound like he might be on his way out of track house. But for Suarez, he has to start performing up to the level of at least his teammate, Ross Chastain, to, you know, be safer. But hey, if NASCAR does, in fact, go to Mexico City, like has been much talked about for 2025, it will be absolute scenes, as the kids say, for Daniel Suarez uh, when he heads down to Mexico City. It's going to be a really cool visual. I'm excited to see them go down there, see him go down there, uh, because they're absolutely going to embrace him with all of the Mexican pride that they possibly have in their body. So Daniel Suarez, back at track house on a one-year deal. Moving on to Kyle Larson. The guy has been an absolute monster in a sprint car this year. That comes as no shock to anybody, right? He's been competitive in literally everything he's gotten, and he's got four NASCAR Cup Series wins up to this point. He has multiple high limit victories, multiple World of Outlaw victories, and his last like week and a half in a sprint car has been, well, two weeks rather, has been absolutely phenomenal. Let's go back two weeks ago at the I-55 Speedway. On Friday night, he comes from 21st to win the race at the line, beating out James McFadden uh, in literal inches to claim victory. The next night on Saturday night, he comes out and wins the Ironman 55 at I-55. And then this past Monday, he goes to Oski. He wins there again. Um, and now he heads to Knoxville Nationals on Thursday night and wins the qualifying night on Thursday, setting himself up to start on pole Saturday night in the feature for the Knoxville Nationals. Kyle Larson is a two-time Knoxville Nationals winner, three times if you want to include 2020 when they called it the one and only because they didn't run it during the pandemic year. He is looking for his third victory in that race coming up on Saturday. He could go back to back. First person to do that since Donnie Schatz did it in like 14 and 15. I believe there's only like six guys that have ever won multiple Knoxville Nationals. Kyle Larson's name is on that list. Now he's looking for his third victory at the Nationals. But I'll be honest, over the last week, Kyle Larson's emulated a lot of Kevin Harvick. Mr. Where did he come from? The closer, because at I-55, he came from the back, came from the middle of the pack. At Oski, he came from middle of the pack. On Thursday night, he came from sixth place, which isn't crazy, but he passed Rico Abreu with two laps to go to lock himself into the feature on Friday night, get himself the most points uh, to start on pole. He and Darren Pittman, both with 490 points um, that came out of the qualifying night. So Kyle Larson is sitting in a really good spot. And it's a good thing that he locked into the feature as well, because with how NASCAR Cup Series practice and qualifying is set up at Richmond on Saturday, there wasn't going to be time to get him from Virginia back to Iowa in time if he had to work his way through the alphabet, probably even the B uh, main at that. So he is locked into the A main, will start on pole Saturday night in a quest to win his third, some may argue fourth, 
Knoxville Nationals. Today's video is sponsored by Driven Sunglasses. Once again, use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. I have a new bra or Driven shirt on. I'm a BREAKHARD shirt. No, this is a Driven shirt. Use code BREAKHARD. Uh, I wear the sunglasses. Shane Van Gisbergen wears the sunglasses. Josh Berry, Ryan Priest, and maybe you can as well. So check out their website today. And then on Friday afternoon, Bristol Motor Speedway and Major League Baseball officially announced the Speedway Classic, a game at Bristol Motor Speedway between the Atlanta Braves and the Cincinnati Reds, scheduled for August 2nd, 2025. It will be the final game of a three-game homestand for the Cincinnati Reds. The first two games on Thursday and Friday will be played in Cincinnati. The third game will be played at Bristol Motor Speedway. There is an off day for both teams on Sunday in case rain happens on Saturday. They'll be able to push it back uh, to Sunday. Visually, they decided to not go with the field layout to make it look like the polo grounds had been resurrected. And honestly, I'm pretty upset <laughs> about it because I want wonky baseball fields. Give me the weirdest setup you can. Give me a center field that is 600 feet long. They would never do it, but it would be highly entertaining. Instead, they decided to take a much more sensible approach and set it up with home plate down against the pit road wall. And now they'll be heading towards what would be NASCAR turn two. And honestly, visually, it looks really cool. Um, they, of course, are going to have the big video board hanging above the field or you know, off to the field a little bit there. So that's going to help out a lot from seeing because if you're sitting in the top of the grandstands at the very back, those baseball players are going to look real tiny down there on the field. And it's going to be easier to watch on the screen, but the atmosphere should be absolutely electric. It looks like turns three and four of the oval will be tarped off, which makes sense because sitting that far away visually isn't going to work out too well. They also will have temporary grandstands set up behind home plate and down the baselines behind the dugout. looks like there might be a press box and maybe a suite uh, over there uh, behind home plate as well. There also will be a crossover bridge to take you from those grandstands on the inside of the track up and over and into the grandstands on the outside of the track, the traditional grandstands there i guess so you can access concessions or everything else that goes along with it but visually it is going to look very very cool i'm excited to see how this game plays out it does not appear that they will be able to hit home runs into the grandstands or that there will be grandstands in the outfield which is great because well f zach hample he doesn't deserve any more baseballs than what he already has i'm sure he'll weasel his way into getting one like he always does visually a very cool setup and hey if you haven't gone to see Ellie De La Cruz play in person, maybe this is your chance to do it because the guy is an absolute electric factory. He's worth the price of admission alone. And if you're a Reds fan, enjoy him while you can because, well, he's not going to be here very long. This bobblehead is about all we're going to have to remember Ellie's time as a Red because, well, they certainly aren't going to win a World Series while he's with the team before he heads off to the Dodgers or the Yankees or whoever is going to give him a massive payday. But for Reds fans, for Braves fans, this is very cool. Ross Chastain was at the announcement on Friday to drive the Reds car around the racetrack. It appears that Chase Elliott was there to do the Braves, or at least they're representing the Braves. And I'll be honest, nothing would make me happier than on August 2nd, 2025 to see Chase Elliott sulking because the Braves did not win that game. Obviously, these two teams were chosen because the Braves are the team of the Southeast. The Reds are the next closest team pretty much to Bristol Motor Speedway. The Reds have a stronghold in the Ohio, West Virginia, Kentucky, Northern Tennessee area. So it makes sense to have all of these teams there. On the topic of tickets, I know a lot of people are going to be wondering about that. Yes. So tickets pre-sale will happen. I believe in October is what they said. If you have tickets to the Bristol night race, if you are a red season ticket holder or a brave season ticket holder, you will have access to the pre-sale tickets. If you, if you don't have any of those three options at your disposal, then in December, there will be a sale to the general public. So you can get your tickets then as well. Hopefully I see you all down there because I will absolutely be going to this event. Really excited to just get there and see how all of it looks. And I mean, the college football game on TV looked absolutely amazing. Baseball having probably their biggest crowd in history is going to be very cool as well. Last topic of the day, Wallace Allen, Mr. Steely Ride, has taken Haley Deegan's ride. Of course, the two famously do not like each other. They got into arguments multiple times uh, in the truck series, including at Martinsville, where they had a very heated argument as well. Technically, didn't steal a ride, right? It's just a funny joke before the Deegan fanboys hop in the comments. And they're like, technically, she'd already left the ride. So he didn't actually take her ride. But, you know, it's, it's not even her ride. Relax. Just relax. It's fine. It's okay to dunk on Haley Deegan every now and then. Because guess what? Wallace Allen's not going to do any better than she did, right? So it's fine. He wrote a check to get that ride. Uh, he is Wallace after all, though. So him taking this uh, seat lives up to his name. I still don't understand why he obeys pit, pit road speed limit. But hey, Wallace Allen works to his own laws. He picks and chooses which one he wants to obey. So let me know in the comments what you think about Daniel Suarez, Kyle Larson sitting on pole, 
the Reds versus Braves at Bristol Motor Speedway and Law Sound taking Haley Deegan's seat. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter, as well as Facebook at Break Hard Blog.